Do you like to role play? Well, let us role play for just a minute. Pretend you're a bank. People trust you with their money, hoping you'll keep it safe. But you're also a business, and like all businesses, you want to make as much money as possible. So you invest your customers' money by lending it to businesses who use it to grow their profits, and you make a killing by charging them interest on these loans. But there's a catch. The best investments are usually the dirtiest ones, investments that destroy, damage, and pollute. This could create big problems for you. If your customers knew what you were really doing with their money, they'd probably stop doing business with you. So over the years, you've become a master of deception, spending millions on PR campaigns and hiring celebrities like Jennifer Garner to be the face of your brand. This creates a smokescreen that makes people see you in a positive light, while behind the scenes, you take part in some of the most evil and destructive practices on planet Earth. This is the story of the modern banking industry and the really dirty things they're able to do with your money every time you make a deposit into your account. And to tell the story, I want to take you on a journey around the world to nations such as United States, Australia, China, and the UK. But first, I think it is important to understand how the banks are able to use your money in order to make them profit and gain. When you deposit money into a bank account, you might think the bank is required to keep it there in case you want to use it, but that's not actually the case. Most banks are only legally required to keep a small percentage of the customer's deposits in their accounts. The rest they can loan out or invest in order for the bank to make more money. This is called fractional reserve banking. The amount banks are required to keep on hand varies from country to country. In the United States, major banks are only required to hold 10% of their customers' deposits. In Australia, it's somewhere around 8%. In the UK, it's 12%. And in most of Europe, it's lower at only 1% of total deposits. Basically, your bank is allowed to hand out most of the money that you give them. And as long as it's legal, they can invest it however they want. So let's have a look at some of the examples of the dirty things that they're doing with your cash. And to start off with, I'd like to focus on my spider-filled home country of Australia. Right now, it's Pride Month around the world. And banks are using their celebration as an excuse to generate a lot of positive PR. In Australia, the big four banks have spent millions this month advertising the fact that they're big supporters of human rights and promoting the idea that they are the good guys who are fighting the good fight for equality. But do they really believe in equality for all? Well, let's put that claim to the test. You know that part in Avatar where the native blue Navis are facing off against those huge bulldozers, the ones that are intruding on the sacred land and destroying the forest they live in? Well, it's a good thing that it's only a fictional story, or is it? Unfortunately, it isn't, except for the 10 foot tall blue alien part. I'm sure you've seen this video of an orangutan fighting off an excavator that's destroying its home. This heartbreaking scene was captured in Borneo, Indonesia. It's part of the world known for heavy deforestation where pristine rainforest is cleared in order to grow profitable crops. And who is responsible for funding this destructive land clearing? Well, according to several reports, all of Australia's major four banks are. They've been accused of funding land clearing and supporting human rights abuses by loaning money to Wilma, a company that has been called the most destructive company on earth, a company that has been accused of forcing indigenous people and endangered animals off their land in order to burn it to the ground, all so that they can replace the rainforest with palm oil crops that bring in enormous profits, profits that then flow back to the banks that loaned Wilma money in the first place. Basically, Australian banks are trying to convince people of just how great they are and how much they support equal rights, but at the same time, they are using their custom is money in order to lend it to companies that are literally burning people off their land in the name of profit. That doesn't sound very equal to me. But what do you think? Let me know down below. Now you might be thinking, well, of course Australia would be lending money to force people off their land. I mean, they're a former prison colony, so it just makes sense that they're doing crazy shit like this. Well, unfortunately for us, Australian banks aren't the only ones. In the United States, banks are spending millions each year on greenwashing campaigns, trying to promote the image that they're environmentally friendly. JP Morgan's Amazon Rainforest NU event hired activists to speak about environmentalism and focused on how beef, soy, and palm oil were accelerating climate destruction. But at the same time, JP Morgan was funding beef, soy, and palm oil production by financing Cargill, one of the world's largest food producers. They also gave almost 700 million in funding to the Genting Group, a Malaysian company heavily involved in rainforest destruction and the production of palm oil. Germany's Deutsche Bank also wants you to believe that they care about the environment, boasting that its employees have planted over 300,000 trees over the last decade. However, this is just a tiny fraction of what they've helped to destroy 
destroy because some of its most profitable relationships are with Cargill and Argicola, companies who in 2020 collectively destroyed an estimated 730,000 hectares of forest, an amount of land that could have been home to over 1 billion trees. Basically, while these banks are trying to brainwash you into thinking that they are the good guys, they're using your money to do some pretty shady stuff. And there is actually more shady stuff, which I'll talk about in a moment. But first, instead of earning low interest on your money by keeping it in a bank account, I want to talk to you about different ways of growing your wealth, including by checking out Sweater, who is the sponsor of today's video. Some of the most financially successful people on the planet have got that way by investing in companies like one of my business heroes, Tim Ferriss. But unlike most of us, they're usually able to invest in companies at the very early stages through venture capital investing. But venture capital investing has generally only been accessible to the super wealthy. That is until Sweater came along. Sweater is the first and only VC fund for everyone, no matter whether you're an accredited investor or not. They believe that everyone should be able to access better tools for investing and growing wealth, which is why they built a platform to allow people to do just that. Venture capital is a fantastic way to diversify your portfolio. It is a high risk asset category, but it also has the potential for highest returns. And this is why venture capital is so loved by the wealthy. If you make your first investment with Sweater by June 30th, you'll become a founding member, meaning that you'll not only get access to their Cashmere Fund's entry share price, but also a ton of other exclusive community benefits as well. To join the Sweater party and invest now, you can find my exclusive invitation link below this video. Okay, so back to the video now. And you might be thinking that I already revealed what is the dirtiest things that banks do with your money. But this is the point where I say, but wait, there's more. Since the Paris Climate Agreement was signed, banks have made a special effort to get you to believe that they care about the environment and that they're committed to reducing our collective carbon output. Over 100 of the world's largest banks have joined the Net Zero Banking Alliance, promising to become net zero by 2050. So you'd expect this means they'd be lowering their emissions and reducing their investment in fossil fuels. Well, instead, they've done the exact opposite. In the six years since the Paris Climate Agreement, investment by the world's 60 largest banks in fossil fuels has increased to over $4.6 trillion. In 2021 alone, these banks provided over $200 billion to the companies most responsible for expanding the fossil fuel industry, ensuring that we'll stay hooked on oil for a long time to come. Okay, so that's gotta be it. There is no way that the banks could be doing any more shady stuff with your cash, right? No way. There's more. The Dutch bank, Rabobank, has been heavily promoting a positive image of sustainability the last few years. However, they have previously heavily financed the Salim Group, an Indonesian conglomerate. Salim has been involved in heavy rainforest destruction and has even been accused of using child slave labor. Rabobank has funded the Sino Mass Group, who has been accused of large-scale deforestation and the bulldozing of sacred religious sites in West Africa. And the Bank of China uses images of lucid waters and lush mountains to promote promote their environmental efforts, while at the same time funding companies that are involved in the destruction of habitat where endangered rhinos, tigers, and orangutans live. Long story short, this is all very sleazy, but the thing is they can only be investing in this stuff because they have your money, because it's us that trust these banks with our savings, with our investment, with our future. Anyway, after hearing this, you might be pretty bummed out and you might even be angrier at your bank than Anakin was after his duel with Obi-Wan. But here's the thing, getting angry doesn't help the situation. Taking your money out of these banks is what will. In the United States, digital bank Atmos is fully transparent about where they invest your money. In the UK, banks like Triodos and Reliance are clearly above more standard banks when it comes to how they are more ethically investing. And in Australia, Bank Australia doesn't take part in many of the more distasteful practices of the big four. Chances are, no matter where in the world you live, there will be alternatives where you can put your money outside of the big banks. And it's also important to remember that banks are masters of public relations and that they're spending billions shaping your opinion so that you'll see them in positive light. For example, when speaking about sustainability, JP Morgan says this, that they will mobilize our efforts and sharpen our focus on key areas that contribute towards solution for the world's toughest challenges. It's a statement that makes them sound pretty great and gives the appearance that they care, while at the same time not promising any kind of specific action or positive result at all. So as I've said many times, 
times on this channel before. Words are cheap. And instead of focusing on the messages that are being put out by these giant companies and banks, follow the money instead. Because the actions that they are partaking in in order to increase their profits probably more accurately reflect their intentions. So yeah, the biggest banks are investing your money into some pretty terrible things. Money that you are willingly handing over to them right now. So yes, in part right now, it is partially our fault that money is so dirty. But it also means that together, we can also make it clean again. So while banks don't put their money where their mouth is, we sure as hell can. Thank you so much for watching. We have an incredible newsletter of 65,000 people plus that are enjoying extra financial nuggets in beautifully written stories, link down below. Also, if you wanna see more videos like this in your feed, consider subscribing. And if you got value from this, share it around and I will see you in the next one.